plug your hard drive in while it's running. And so I'm actually going to connect it to a computer, and I'm going to have it physically running. And while it's running, I'm going to put the hard drive to sleep. I'm going to tell it power down, which like in Windows, you can tell it like three minutes. You can use other tools. There's Linux tools that allow you to put your hard drive to sleep. So there's a lot of different ways to do that. But you're going to say, go to sleep. I don't need you. And it basically is going to like kind of hibernate. The platter is going to stop spinning. That's your key right there. When the platters are not spinning, that your hard drive is asleep, but it's still powered on and still connected. Then you pick up the, you basically have four screws on the bottom. You take those screws out and be careful not to let the screws like roll around on your board. <laughs> okay. That's bad. That's really bad. And if you see smoke, you can just stop. That's <laughs> smell a funny smell. Need an air freshener. Uh, if any of that happens, then you can just stop and get another hard drive and try all over again. But uh, you don't want to mess up your bad hard drive any worse than it already is. So as long as the good hard drive is the only one that failed and you can find another one on eBay, then buy another one on eBay. So then you can, you're going to take those screws off and you're going to move it to the bad hard drive. So we move the good drive to the bad hard drive. Okay? Physically, the board, while it's powered up, still running, the operating system still thinks it's there, my computer is still running, everything is still going, and I put it on the other drive. Now, what's going to happen is it loaded the SA area from the other hard drive. It loaded the serial number. It loaded your bad block tables. It loaded the P list and the G list, not just the G list. It loaded everything. So as far as it's concerned, it is the other hard drive. And so when you tell it to wake back up, it is not going to reinitialize. It is not going to go back and say, let me read the SA area again. It's going to actually power up and pretend to be the other drive. Now, the reason I say that this only works, say, 30% of the time, is that there's other things that can cause problems. Like, for instance, okay, now your heads are trying to read a block. It is a bad block, and now it needs to write it back into the bad block table. So now it's going to try to go and move the head to the SA area and try to write to it. It may fail at that point in time. So I would say imaging is the best way. You don't want to use a piece of software that says, I want to scan my hard drive from beginning to end and find my files. You want to image it. So there's programs out there. If you're using Windows, you can use like FTK Imager. You can use any program that can image your hard drive from beginning to end. There are some ways to do it with other tools, and I'll talk about those in a minute. But the whole point is if you have an image of it, the nice thing about images, too, are whatever you've already captured and you've already written, let's say you use DD and you say crawl from the beginning to the end, whatever you've already captured and already written, you've already got, even if it fails. You may have enough, so you have a 500 gig hard drive, but you're able to image 200 gigs before it fails. You may have all your data. You know, it may be that you never wrote enough data for it to reach further out, and you never have anything above that 200, 300 gig mark. So it's possible for it to work, and it's possible for you to get a recovery that can work. But still, you have to have this duplicate hard drive, and that's always the pain. <clears throat> you have another option, which is called imaging in reverse. Now, most hard drives today have cache memory on the drive itself. So some have 4 gigs, 8 gigs, whatever. The point with cache is that it tries to predict ahead of time and read ahead into your hard drive 8 megs, 8 gigs, whatever, whatever it is that your cache is. It's going to try to read that far ahead into the drive. So you may not need that file. You may not need what's 8 megs in front of you. You may never even ask for that file. However, the hard drive is going to dive in. It is never going to finish and never complete what you're already on or the file that you're on. It's going to die at that spot and go into a retry mode and basically try to recalibrate itself over and over and over again. That's the clicking noise, is this recalibration. It gets an error. It says, oh, i got to reset. Maybe I'm going to power down. I'm going to go to the beginning of the drive, read the SA area, and start all over again. Well. You don't want that to happen. So maybe it's a problem with memory on this particular board. And you believe you would not believe how often that this is actually true. It is more common for it to be a problem with memory on the board than almost any other problem that I've seen. So what you can do is you can image it in reverse. If you image a hard drive in reverse from the last sector to the first sector, basically there is no cache. It is a pre-cache. So it is reading ahead. It is not reading behind. So if you start at the end of the drive and you move to the beginning of the drive, it never caches anything except that current block that you're on, that current sector. So there are basically three or four ways that I know that you can do an image in reverse. 
Uh, there is a program called Media Tools Pro for Windows or a DOS boot disk. Uh, it's like $300, $400. There is a piece of hardware that's called a, uh, Imager, which is called D Deep Spar Disk Imager. It's a great piece of hardware. It does a bunch of other stuff, but it's about four grand. Or you have the Freeway. I bet everybody likes the Freeway. Um, that is DD Rescue. DD Rescue has a switch that allows you to actually run it in reverse. And so for free, if you know Linux and you can do it in Linux and you can hook it up, it doesn't matter what OS that you're recovering. It doesn't matter if it's Mac OS, it doesn't matter if it's a Windows machine. If you can hook it up to your Linux box, run it in reverse, get an image of it, then you can go do your logical recovery somebody somewhere else. The whole point is to get the image so that you can do your logical recovery afterwards. You never mess with the original again. So if you can use DD Rescue, and then there's some other add-ons and there's like a script that somebody wrote that's called DDR help that does a great job with DD rescue it basically controls DD rescue and tries multiple ways to go and do a recovery again free so that would probably be my suggestion of a way to do this and this can actually solve a lot of problems uh, if you can just image it right away in reverse it'll solve a lot of your problems <clears throat> so then we have the really hard stuff which is the head replacement stuff and the head replacement stuff uh, will fix this problem physically if you are able to physically pull the heads off and move a set of heads from a good hard drive to the bad hard drive. You basically strip down your hard drive, you remove everything. If you're lucky enough that your hard drive has this ramp, you can actually use this ramp to help realign the heads and put them back on, and it makes it a lot easier. A lot of hard drives now are actually parking the heads on the outside, but there's still a bunch that actually park them on the inside. And basically the whole point, if it's parked on the inside, is that you want to spin the platters manually, physically either with a screwdriver or something through the center of the shaft. You want to spin it underneath the heads in the same direction that the arm is. So in this particular case, it's going to spin this way. And you physically spin them and move the heads off gradually while you're doing it till you get to the end of the drive. And then you can actually use paper and put the paper between there and hold the heads apart while you pull it off. Now, if the two hit, you, you might survive. Uh, it's probably, at least the preferred method, obviously, would be to pry them apart and keep them apart from each other. And there's some other people who are trying some different things with plastic straws, like cutting off a little piece of a plastic straw and capping it over the end, especially if they're going to try to store it for a while, maybe when they bought a new hard drive. It hasn't shipped yet, and they're waiting for it, but they've already disassembled it. So things like that happen quite a bit. So you can basically take that assembly off and you can move it to your other hard drive. Now you're going to destroy a good hard drive on the way, so it's going to be bad for you if it's like a terabyte or something, but you know, if you've got your 100 gig and you're happy and you can tear it apart, you're going to be good. Pretty much everything that's up to say 300 or 400 gigs now you can get for like 80 bucks online somewhere. Your hard part's still going to be matching another hard drive and getting the exact one you need. Um, I'm kind of probably caused a lot of my own problems from that standpoint because now that I've given you know these speeches and told people about it everybody's out there hunting for it so now what happens when I call somebody on eBay is they go oh yeah you're gonna do a hard drive recovery that's an extra hundred dollars for this hard drive so so it's a uh, it's getting a little worse from that standpoint but I may have caused that problem myself so no one to blame but me <clears throat> and then you have your option of the platter swap now, if you have a single platter, it's going to be very easy. Basically, you can do this. I mean, like some of the 20 gig Mac stores, it's a breeze. You basically take off a bunch of screws, move the head out of the way. You don't really have to do much work at it, and you can move it to another drive, spin it up, and go right away. So very easy, great, wonderful. Uh, you just basically have to be really careful with your heads again. In some cases, you can do exactly like I did here, where you actually are just moving the head just out of the way and not actually having to disassemble the whole assembly. Uh, you probably have to loosen the screws, but It'll work, and you can do it. Multi-platter. This is the tool I'm talking about. This tool looks a lot like a coffee can. Very thin metal, and it's got this V-shape right here on the right-hand side. Basically, what's going to happen is there's a little cap inside that is just basically hanging there that will keep screws from floating around on top of the top platter. And so basically, you're going to take this particular tool and you're going to disassemble all the things around the sides of your platter and then you're going to be able to actually take your th you know three platters four platters i've done up to four so far <clears throat> and you're going to be able to slide it over them keep them all aligned and then this causes the pressure when you push down on this little v-shape when you do that you'll be able to take out the screws inside and they'll just sit there on top of the lid of this thing 